Now for more analysis on the Kenyan presidential election, I'm joined in the studio by James Gundi. He is adjunct professor at Georgetown University. Mr. Gundi, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you. You know, a very serious claim there by the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, about the hacking of the computer systems of IEBC, also saying these are fake results, and of course, Massive fraud. What do you make of those very, very tough statements? They are worrisome, and they, those are statements that should worry everybody. Raila Odinga is um, a powerful voice in Kenyan politics. What concerns me uh, in his statement, in fact, is, a state, is when he says that the entire election, 2017 election, is a fraud. That's a very uh, conclusive statement that he's making. At this point, I am not sure that is a, st is a kind of statement he should make. I think uh, NASA, the opposition coalition, does have some valid concern, some reason to be concerned. The history of the country is a history where elections have been rigged, not just in the last 10 years, but you know, since uh, independence, we've had elections rigged. Malpractices in electioneering, that's something that happens quite a lot. But the concern I have at this point is when you have such conclusive statements that the entire 2017 election is a fraud, then you're already sending messages to your foot soldiers that there is nothing else that is going to happen except we are going to lose, and we are going to lose unfairly. But again, uh, Dr. Gundi, the Electoral Commission Chairman uh, Webukati, uh, Chebukati says results displayed on their portal is uh, equally, you know, is unofficial. Mm -hmm. And the question is, why even display these results in the first place? Because this is also very confusing uh, until they say, you know, like Vincent said, until they are officially on Form 34A and B. Mm -hmm. uh, why bring the confusion then by displaying them on their portal? Uh, and I'm not sure that the IABC went out to bring confusion deliberately. I, I really think uh, the way I look at it is that IABC was in a no-win situation. So IBC wanted to keep people informed and provide results as soon as they could as a way of calming down tensions. But they made a mistake because if you're going to give any kind of results as a commission empowered to tally and provide results, people will have confidence that the results coming from IBC are credible and final. Okay, now very quickly, what do you expect when the official results are announced by the IABC? What I expect is different from what I hope for. I'm hoping for peace. I'm hoping that um, sane minds will prevail. I'm hoping that we'll see leadership. I think this is a time when true leaders will emerge and should be seen. So I'm hoping that whatever happens, one, IEBC can put confidence back into the system. I think what Vincent says is absolutely right. There is a deficit of confidence right now. IEBC must be trusted, and they need to do everything to win back that trust. And hopefully, whoever wins will be magnanimous in victory and will say the right things, and whoever loses will be magnanimous enough and accede and accept, at least concede uh, defeat, and at least encourage um, his supporters to, um, to maintain peace and to remain calm. That's my hope. I don't know what to expect. Uh, I can only cross my fingers and hope for the best. Let's hope for the best. Mm -hmm. All right, James, uh, thank you very much. Uh, James Gundy is a political analyst and adjunct professor at Georgetown University here in Washington, D.C.